If you're looking for another fantastic four-star Dendro DPS, Kabe is looking to be that guy. Now, this is very important. We're gonna have three different types of weapon categories for you because, well, Kabe can be used in at least three different types of ways. And if you don't see this explanation, you might get a little bit confused. Now, each of these three different role comparisons should be very self-explanatory for you. Each of the weapons is gonna have a percentage value next to it. 100%, for instance, will be the baseline amount. And then if a weapon's better than that weapon for you, it'll have a higher percent, 110, 120, 130% of the expected value compared to the baseline. If it's weaker than that, it'll be 96%, 90%, 70% of the weapons really bad for that particular play style. In one small note, as we get into it, Kabe is gonna have around 170 to 180 of energy recharge requirements. So you can facilitate all of these types of play styles and builds because he's very dependent on having that elemental burst ready when you need him to do the damage for you. And each of these weapons are built with the best main stat substat combination that you could for these different teams. So the first weapon comparison we're gonna be doing as Kabe as the dendro driver for your team, a lot of damage there, but not necessarily someone who wants to actually to take ownership of those bloom related reactions. So the first thing that everyone's gonna look at is the Serpent Spine, which is going to be the baseline here. The Serpent Spine with no stacks, no passive at all, is gonna be 100% our baseline. Why are we using this? Well, in a Bloom team, which Kave is gonna be in, there's a lot of self-damaging going on. So if you don't have a big shield to protect him from all this self-damage Bloom going on, you're gonna be losing all the stacks of your spine. However, if you do have the ability to shield him continuously, then the Serpent Spine at R1 is gonna be 118% of our baseline. Whereas an R5 Serpent Spine, is actually going to be the best four star weapon you can have for this particular playstyle for Kave at 131%. But keep in mind, you cannot take damage from Bloom. You have to always block it with a shield. Otherwise, you're gonna be losing stacks from the spine and it's going to fall all the way down to that baseline. A fantastic weapon for this particular build for Kave is gonna be the Nagamasa, as it's going to allow you to drop some of that energy recharge requirement we just talked about, down a little bit to either 155% ER at R1 to around 130% ER if you have an R5 Nagamasa. And this will place the Nagamasa R1 at 109% to up to 111, 112% at R5. Now, all the other four star weapons here are either going to be below that by a significant amount or just a little bit. Prototype Archaic at R5 is around 106%. The Sacrificial Greatsword, which is a decent energy battery option here for you is gonna be down at 101%, just over our baseline there. The Forest for Gali is a pretty decent option if you do like to pick up that little leaf it leaves behind and get 100% uptime on that passive. That one's pretty decent, but it still will just be over our baseline at around 102, 103%. Now being a main DPS build that doesn't really care for a lot of elemental mastery bonuses in this role, the five-star weapons have a bigger benefit here than they do for any other type of build for Kave. And that's because we're looking at just raw damage and all we really care about are big, nice numbers and these five-star weapons are gonna have them for us. Now between 121 and 127% of our baseline will be Song of the Broken Pines, as well as the Unforged with no shield because the passive will be turned off that way. We also have the Wolf's Gravestone without the proc activated, which will be 126% of our baseline. And right with the Wolf's Gravestone without the proc activated is Red Horn Stone Thresher at 126 to 127% of our baseline there. Unforged at R1 with a shield is also gonna be 131% of our baseline. Skyward Pride is actually fairly decent here as just like the not Nagamasa has some energy recharge on it, but it has some bonus five star stats for you here and the proc's pretty decent and it has elemental damage bonus on it. All in all, it's just a very solid weapon for a Kave build. But the big one here is gonna be Beacon of the Reed Sea as a generic weapon. It has crit chance on it and because Kave is gonna be in a lot of bloom focused teams that self damage you constantly, you will have extremely high uptime on this passive, boosting your attack by a pretty significant margin. So a lot of crit chance here, a lot of free attack, leaving you to build up Kave to just get a lot of really nice stats out of your artifacts in this weapon as well. And if you're looking for a giant burst damage Kave, then a R1 Wolf's Gravestone with the proc activated will be 146% of our baseline. Now, while it's the highest here, remember this is only while the Wolfstone's proc is activated, but without that proc, 
stock activated, it will fall back down to 126% of our baseline. Out of the three different play styles for Kave, this is the one where the five star weapons have a more significant benefit than any of the four stars. Because while we don't really get full value out of something like the mailed flower or the Makahara Aquamarine, because we're not taking ownerships of Bloom with Kave in this play style. So if you're looking forward to a good four star weapon for this type of build and play style for Kave, I would go for the Nagamasa here if you're not using a big shielded character. If you're using someone to put a giant shield in your Kave, go ahead, use the Serpent Spine. It's gonna be a fantastic option for you. And if you have any of the five stars we talked about, they're all pretty close together, especially if you're having a shielded Unforged, Skyward Pride, Beacon of the Reed Sea, or just the Wolf's Gravestone. Now, the next play style we're gonna be talking about is the play style where Kave is still that driver, still that damage dealer for your team, but he's gonna take ownership of some of the Bloom procs, but not all of them. And this is where you'll see all of the weapons will be a lot closer together in power level and power discrepancy than they were before. This is because we need to both have attacking stats, crit chance, crit damage, as well as elemental mastery and energy recharge. So weapons that can facilitate that entire game plan will get much more of a benefit here instead of your elemental mastery being wasted when he's not proccing blooms. Now he's going to be proccing some blooms and he's going to get benefit from that. Our baseline here is going to be the R5 mailed flower. Just because of the reasons we talked about, it gives you elemental mastery, it gives you attack. It's pretty nice as well. So if you were around for this event, it could be a nice weapon for you to put on Kave in this type of playstyle. Right next to that's going to be the Makahara Aquamarine for the same exact reasons, elemental mastery and attack as well. It's also going to be a little bit better than our baseline, 102, 103%, and maybe even better than that if you have other characters in your party that also is going to benefit from this elemental mastery to attack bonus. But all in all, it's a fantastic option and is slightly better than an R5 mailed flower. The Serpent Spine at R1 with max stacks this time for this build is only 100 four percent of our baseline and this is still going to require you to never lose stacks of serpent spine and make you play with a giant shield character and our five serpent spine is only 111 percent of our baseline it's only 11 percent stronger than just using the mailed flower here but still also restricts you on using that big shield if you don't have access to the mailed flower and you don't want to play with the serpent spine but still looking for a four star weapon and you don't have access to the aquamarine weapons that fall between 97 and 95 percent of our baseline here are weapons like the R5 Forest for Gallia, as well as the R5 version of the Rain Slasher. The Rain Slasher might seem like a very good weapon, but you're not gonna have all time on this all that often because you're gonna be applying Dendro and the enemy's not gonna have Hydro on it. It's gonna have a Dendro Aura. It's really there just for the elemental mastery in a lot of circumstances. And that's why it's so much significantly worse than something like the Mailed Flower here. And one of our best four-star weapons for the strictly DPS driver build we talked about before, the Naga Masa is only gonna be 96% of our baseline as well. Yeah, the energy recharge was nice, but that's really all this weapon gives us. We have much better options like the mailed flower and the aquamarine that gives us both elemental mastery as well as attack. Multiple stats we really need at the same time. And so this one falls down quite substantially. And we can also see just how good these four star weapons are that have a mix of attack as well as elemental mastery when we compare them to the five star weapons. So something like the Red Hone Stone Thresher, R1, Unforged with no shield, and Song of Broken Pines are all 102 to 102.8% like of our baseline here, which is gonna be just the four star milled flower. Now between 105% and 107% of our baseline, we have Beacon of the Reed Sea at 107, Unforged Skyward Pride in Wolf's Gravestone without the procs activated. And the number one weapon for burst damage is still going to be the Wolf's Gravestone, but it's only 112% of our baseline here. It's not that much stronger in comparison to other weapons that you can use. Vastly different than the other comparison where it was at 139, almost 140%. So while those raw five-star stats are still pretty good because you're only taking advantage of some of the Bloom and Dendro Core reactions on Kave himself, they're much more tame as weapons in comparison to when Kave was just there to do damage. And we'll see this power discrepancy between the four and five star weapons shrink even more when we move into the final build here, where Kave is going to be taking ownership of quite a lot of bloom reactions in your party, while still being the driver and damage dealer of your dendro element. The final Kave playstyle, this weapon comparison, a lot of these weapons are actually extremely close together in 
strength. So let's just go through it this way this time. Weapons that fall between 98% to 101% in our baseline of 100% are as follows. This is literally a couple thousand points of damage on a rotation off of each other. Fantastic weapons that fall in this category. Nagamasa R1, Aquamarine R1, Serpent Spine R1 with max stacks is in here as well. Forest Regalia R1 is in here. Song of Broken Pines unforged with or without a shield falls between 99 to 101% of our baseline. Redhorn Stone Thrasher, Beacon of the Reed Sea up at 101.9% of our baseline. Forest Regalia R5 at 101% of our baseline. Wolf's Gravestone at 100% of our baseline as well. And so some of the top weapons that you can have here, the breakaways, if you will, are between 102% and 104, maybe 105% of the baseline. Unforged with the shield is the tippity top of the category we just talked about at 101.5% of the baseline. Mailed Flower R5 is 102. 0.3% of our baseline, making it into the top five weapons for this playstyle for Kave. We also have the Aquamarine at R5 being a hundred into almost 103% of our baseline as well. So if you have the male flower or the Aquamarine as four star weapons, they're some of the best weapons for Akave who's going to be proccing multiple bloom reactions. Serpent Spine R5 is also at 104.1%, and it is still one of the best four-star weapons for Kave, regardless of how you want to play him in a bloom team, but he has to have shields. And up here with the R5 Serpent Spine for this build as well, is going to be the Wolf's Gravestone at R1 when the passive is activated. It's at 104.5% of the baseline. Another great weapon here is the Skyward Pride at R1, one, giving you a nice amount of energy recharge while also having a damaging proc that's pretty decent and also boosting up the elemental damage you do with part of its refinement ability and is in general just a good solid go-to weapon for any Kave build. At the end of the day, you're going to have to make the decision of what you think is best for you and your artifact stats. Let me know what weapon you're going to be picking for your Kave down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.